Hey, uh, YouTubers, Taz Man here. My voice is getting a little raw. <laughs> Bringing you another episode of Taz Teaches Java. Sorry, I was grabbing my water. Um, so in the last episode, we have now learned all the main things, I believe, or the majority of the main things that we need to learn to actually start making programs. So we have one big thing left, and we've kind of touched on it throughout this whole thing, and we've seen it. We've definitely seen it throughout this whole thing. Um, but now we're going to explain it a lot better. And these are classes themselves. So as we mentioned, like in the very first few videos, a class is... Uh, what Java uses because it's very object oriented and generally you have one class per set of code and then another class for another set of code and so on and so forth now just so you understand when we're invoking different things like the system uh, system out dot print line and stuff that's a class and uh, let me just maybe I could show you real quick so if you were wondering where all this stuff from Java is, if you installed the JDK, you'll be able to do uh, the following. You'll be able to go to your, you'll be able to go to your, uh, wherever you have Java installed. And if you go into the JDK, am I in the right one? Program file, yeah. You go into the JDK, there's this file down here called source.zip. And this is what Java uses for everything. This is more for your Java uh, GUI stuff. But this is where everything that we pretty much use in Java is. This is the main resource. And if we open this up, you'll see a familiar structure. For example, when we type in, when we import something, for example, we would do Java, AWT we've used. We've used uh, Lang. Although we don't generally have to import Lang because this is kind of the main one. This is the language. But if we go here, we can go down here and we can find, for example, java.system. Right? And uh, if we if we open this up, I'm just going to open it in Notepad+. Plus, well, I guess I'm not. Uh, we'll see what we open it in. We're opening it in some goofy thing. Uh, let's see. Can I actually set you... Da, da, da. Well, we can just look at it real quick. It's not going to do syntax highlighting or anything, but we'll, we'll still be able to get an idea. So when we're doing system, we're invoking this one. As you can see, it also invokes other ones or imports other ones. But you can see all of them start basically with this class. Everything is a class. System's a class. String is a class. If we go here, we have our string class for putting strings. Now, you won't find an int class. You'll find an integer class, um, which I believe, int, maybe, I actually, it's probably not here. Oh, there's integer right there. Uh, but you won't find an int. You won't find a boolean that's the lowercase boolean. You'll find the bigger. You won't find uh, the lowercase byte because those are actual data types. Classes are there are kind of like blueprints. So the definition, this is a definition I found for a class. A class is a template that defines the form of an object. It specifies both the data and the code that will operate on that data. Java uses a class specification to construct objects. Objects are instances of a class. Thus, a class is essentially a set of plans, like a blueprint, the specific uh, that specify how to build an object it is it is important to be clear on one issue a class is a logical abstraction it is not until the object of that class has been created that a physical representation of that class exists in memory so if we create a class called dog and we have eat sleep blah 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 it doesn't actually become an object that's just a that's just the instance or the not the instance that's just the specification or the blueprint for what our dog objects would be then we actually when we actually call 
a dog object, that is when all of a sudden it becomes solidified and we can act upon that directly. Now there is kind of uh, exceptions to the rule, like when we do our, our, um, our main class, well let's just create our class right here real quick. Let's do new, uh, new package and do classes, C-L-A-S-S-E-S, -S -S, classes, like that, and then we'll say, what should we do? Let's just call it class for now. Why not? So when we create a class, it's really easy to create. Basically, you just have to give its identifier or its access modifier. You use the class keyword and then the name of the class. Now, I think we've mentioned this before. The class name should be the same as the file name. And there are some exceptions to this rule, and I think we've seen them in some of our stuff where we might have had multiple classes. I'm trying to think instantly where it was. I can't remember directly. But we can actually have that. And inside our classes, we have our variables, which we've seen various times. We have our class members, which are our variables. So we could have private int number, whoops, number, number, like so. Or we actually, let's do this. Let's say uh, private int health. And let's set that to say 10. Uh, equals 10 so something like that and this creates a private thing that can only be seen now we've already H -E -L -T -H. Uh, we've already kind of talked about the private and the public and the protected and the default um, so I'm not going to go into great detail if you need a re refresher on that go check one of my previous videos I think I actually called it access modifiers or something along those lines but inside your class you have your data members or your uh, class variables, I guess, or uh, what else do they call these? I'm trying to think. Uh, these are just our variables. We'll just leave it at that. Um, and then you have your methods. And methods are kind of like verbs. They're actions, something that happens. So we could say uh, let's say public, public, oh, let's see, what should we say, public void, yeah, public void, so we're not returning anything, that's what the void means, if we were returning an integer, we'd say int, if we were returning anything else, boolean and such, we would do that, we've already gone over those, um, let's call this, a let's call hurt player h-u-r-t-p-l-a-y-e-r and go ahead and do that it doesn't need to take any parameters and let's just say um, whenever this is invoked we could say h-e-a-l-t health equals health minus 2. H-E-A-H-E-L. I can't spell today. So healthy equals health minus 2. Um, maybe we'll have a heal player. Uh, oops. So public bind <laughs> void uh, H-E-A-L. Did I spell it right that time? Player. And that doesn't need to take anything. And maybe we'll say H-E-A-L to health equals H-E-A-L-T-H plus two. And I spelled that all right. Good. So these, for example, are your verbs. If I invoke hurt player, it will take health away from our player at increments of two. Now maybe we want to also say something like we can't exceed 10, right? 
So this is where we could use a decision thing. We could say if ATL to help is less than, let's see, we'd probably say eight or not us is less than nine because then it could be eight or we could say less than equal to ATLTH is less than equal to eight or whoops no 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 sorry less than we want greater than because we don't want hmm, we don't want to subtract the two actually you know this is kind of outside the scope we'll, we'll come back to that maybe later and figure it out so here we have our public class uh, called class. Now, one thing we could actually do here, I'm gonna change this to P-L-A-Y-E-R. We're gonna take off the public on this and just call it a regular class. And then we're gonna have down here, we're gonna do uh, So this is an example of having multiple classes in one file. Now the thing to note is when this compiles it will actually create kind of a class file for this and a class file for this one. So this one will be our class one. Uh, so we're going to say public CLA class and CLASS like that and then do this and that. And this is where our main can reside. So we could say uh, main MA main I think and so now this is actually the main class this is just kind of a subclass in here but it's small enough that we didn't want to create a whole nother class for it uh, and generally maybe we don't want to do that but let's say we wanted to create a player we could say so to invoke a new uh, an object to create an object of our class what we do is we would say player because this is our our class type or our object type p l a y player which is this guy right here and we would say uh, player and maybe we'd say p1 for player one equals and then we need to say we want a new object so we use the new one and then we say p l a y e r and then parentheses just like that and now you can see this will create a new player now, we don't have any way of actually seeing what health is. So what we want to do is maybe say, get health. We want to be able to say, what is the health of the player? So we're gonna do what's called a getter. We usually have getters and setters because these are private. So we could say uh, public, because we wanna be able to access it outside. Pew, pew, public. <laughs> And this time we are returning something. We're returning an integer. And we're going to say get health, right? We don't need to actually take any parameters for this. We just need to give one. And we're going to return. And we're going to return health. So here we go. We have a very very base of a simple simple game where we could have player one and player two and they could sit and punch each other um, so like if we said p1 well let's do this let's do s out and we could say get actually no we have to say p1 dot get help so this is invoking this is saying I want the player one object and I want to invoke the method called get health. So it's going to be able to get health. Now these actually are supposed to be private. No, actually, no, we want those public too. So here we go, we do that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say P1 and we're gonna take a little damage. So hurt, hurt player. And then we're going to say P1, maybe hurt player again to make sure it's hurting the player. And then the reason I'm doing this uh, two carriage returns between these because I'm going to copy this and put it in between. Then what we're going to do is we're going to heal our player. Just one. H A. Heal player. There we go. And let's go ahead and copy this guy. 
and say C and B and I think I hit insert V and finally a V. So what this is going to do is this is going to print out the current health of our player which will be 10 then we're going to hurt the player which is going to subtract 2 from 10 and make it 8 right and then it's going to output 8 then it's going to hurt the player again subtract 2 from 8 we get 6 and then we're going to output 6 then we're going to heal the player and which gives us 2 and that's going to heal us for 2 making that 8 again so we're going to get 8 so we're going to get 10 8 6 8 and run so there we go 10 8 6 8 so this is just a real quick basic class uh, or the concept behind a basic class um, we're gonna also let's see we're at 15 we're, we're okay so let's go ahead and just do a little bit more on some examples of class um, but what what we really want to understand here is the class generally has uh, the data members and then it also has its methods data methods or whatever you want to call it instance methods instance variables whatever you want to call it and when we create a new class we invoke the class name we give it our name that we want to do we say equals and we say new and we do player or whatever the name of the class is with parentheses now this is oops, this is actually called a constructor and we're gonna probably go over that in the next episode um, because constructors can get uh, pretty pretty big and there's other things that go spawn off of that that I want to get into so this is kind of the basics so what we want to do now we're gonna close out this guy and I'm gonna actually create a new package inside this package a uh, new package inside classes we're gonna call this I think we can do this dot vehicle just to kind of show you some more to help drive this point home so now inside classes you can't actually see it here but in the actual structure inside classes is a classes vehicle and we're gonna create a class called vehicle and this one's gonna be called V E H I C L E vehicle like that and this is going to be our class for our vehicle so let's talk just a little bit about a vehicle so what are some attributes of a vehicle well let's see we have let's do uh, private p-r-i-v-a-t-e private int uh, we have passengers number of passengers right num p-a-s-s-e-n-g-e-r-s -S -E so we have num passengers and should we just leave that I think we'll just leave that as is we aren't gonna do a default set on it uh, we might also have the uh, what should we call it fuel capacity maybe P-R-I-V-A-T private and let's do it as an int just keep it straight here and we'll call this uh, F-U-E-L fuel C-A-P fuel cap so we'll do that um, let's see how about miles per gallon that'd be a good one uh, P -R -I -V -A -T, private and then we'll just call this MPG and that's probably enough for for what we're doing private and MPG P -R -I -V -A -T -E. these animals are wrong there all right, so then what we want to do is uh, we don't need to make it do anything just yet. Let's just have it be that. Now let's go ahead and save that. So this is our vehicle class. Now we don't have to have in any of the methods. There maybe you have something that doesn't actually have methods. Maybe it's a a book sitting on a shelf and all you have is pages and something like that so it's possible now let's go ahead and hmm actually 
Well, let me show you something. I think I've shown this before. I don't remember if it was in a different uh, type of series. But we might want, because these are private, we need the setters and getters. So a really quick way to do this is we can come here to, where is it? I thought it was under source. Generate setters and getters. Now what we can do is we can say, well, I want to be able to set, for example, I definitely want to get the fuel cap, the miles per gallon maybe. I'm just going to set them all. We can remove them later if we decide not to uh, keep them. So this automatically generates setters and getters for you so that these private variables can actually be set and retrieved. So as you can see, we have get uh, set uh, number, get number passengers, set number passengers. And as you can see, if we want to set it, we actually have to set it, we have to pass it in a variable. When we're getting something, we don't have to we don't have to pass in a variable, but we definitely want something returned where when we set it, we don't care if it's returned. So those are default setters and getters. So let's go and save that. And then we're going to create another new class. And we're going to call this one maybe vehicle demo. Vehicle demo. Demo. Like so. Now this is actually going to be our main one, so we need our main. Now you might notice, remember we said that all classes, you know, have variables and they have, well, okay, not all classes. That's kind of a, a lie. I need a drink real quick. But when we do our main like this, you actually see main is a method. So it's public static void main. Now, I think I've mentioned it before, but what static means is you cannot instantiate or create an object of, of main. There, it, it can actually exist outside of having a class uh, or an object created for it. Okay, so now we have that. Let's go ahead and enter a couple times. And maybe let's create a couple um, let us let's create a couple of vehicles so since we have a vehicle let's go ahead and we'll do a let's do like a what should we do a, let's do a sports car maybe S P O R T S. Oops, I don't want to do it like that. I'm thinking outside here. So we want to do a vehicle, V E H I C L E, because we want a vehicle, which will invoke our vehicle thing. And we want to say S P O R T sports car. Right? I'm going to say equals new S, oh, whoops, new vehicle. And if we hit tab, you can actually see we can get our vehicle right there. And there we go. We now have a vehicle that's a sports car. Let's make another one. V -E -A -T -A -C -L -E. Vehicle, maybe pickup truck or something. V -E -A -C -K -U, pickup truck. Equals new vehicle. So here we have two vehicles. Now what's important to understand is these are not related in any shape way or form sure they all have these three things associated with them number of passengers fuel cap and mpg however they that's where the that's where the similarities end the what they're set to those values are not shared in any shape way or form unless of course we said maybe a static thing um and then that would not be part of this. It would actually act something else. We will actually, excuse me, we'll go into that a little later on. So we have two vehicles here. And let's see, I have some notes here that I wanted to mention. Now, one other thing I wanted to also mention about this, and this will come in a little later. When you create these, you are not, hmm, how do I say it? 
when you create these, what you're doing is you're creating a reference. <coughs> Ooh, shoo, sorry about that. You're creating a reference to memory. So let me grab my pen real quick. All right, we're good there. So when I do this and I say uh, sports car, O-R-T-S-C-A-R, when I create a sports car, this is the name of the variable that we're creating. It's actually pointing to a reference. So what this is actually pointing to, remember we went over memory and stuff. So this is actually pointing to a memory location and we'll just say, you know, like 31FA2C09. For example, that is what this is pointing to. This is actually the reference point in memory which would be let's just pretend this is uh, more than that this is the whole span so if we went like this however many pieces of memory this object's going to use because it needs to keep all those instance variables and stuff so this is maybe this right here is the start point for this right and it uses let's say this much memory now when we create the minivan or wait no we said uh, pickup truck right P I C K U P pickup T R U C K so when we create a pickup truck even though it's the same stuff it might be pointing to 0x uh, like maybe 3, 5, I don't know. Uh, let's say everything else is kind of the same. I don't know why. 2b maybe. We'll just shift up some of these things. 8. And let's just pretend that location's right here. So this is the variables associated with our pickup truck. Now as you can see, these are not in the same thing. So if we set this like to a, you know, this is the number of passengers, we set that to two, or because it's a sports car. This is a, you know, king cab or something like that. So we could set this to five. Um, they're individual. But the important thing to note is this is actually, when we create the variable, we're pointing to this, right? This is why when we say uh, my pickup truck, P I C K U P pickup. P I C K U P uh, truck. Dot MPG. This is telling it to go here and then locate in here which of these guys is the MPG. So, for example, maybe this little chunk of code right here is where it's keeping the MPG. And then it can return this value. And we're gonna, you're gonna understand a little bit more why I'm explaining this uh, later on. But right now, just understand that when you're creating a class, an object from a class, you're creating a reference to a chunk of memory. So this is just the address of the chunk of memory. And I can maybe, maybe I could show you. Let's see, can I? Maybe we can kind of demo that. So here we've created two two things, right? So let's just try and do S out. And let's do sports car. Now, this isn't actually going to show you the location in memory because Java really doesn't, the, the Java that we're running here doesn't do it. It's the JVM or the J, JRE that has the access to that. So this is going to kind of just be a simulation type of thing. Uh, what am I doing? S out and pickup truck. Pickup truck. There we go. So if I do this and I run this, what I should see is some really weird things saying what they are. So this is saying it's classes because it's inside classes. It's a vehicle because it's inside a vehicle. And then it's a vehicle, so this is the class vehicle. 
and then this is the reference point for the information that is all this stuff, right? And as you can see, they're not the same. So that just gives you a quick idea of, and also, you know, if I'm telling it to print this, it doesn't know what it's printing out. Now, if I said this, dot mpg, which will probably come back as a zero because we never said it yet. So we do get mpg. So this is saying, now here's the sports car. We're pointing to that memory location. We're looking for this method or what it's actually returning. So if we run this, we'll get rid of that, but you see it's actually zero because we haven't said any of that stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and set some values for this. Hit tab. Um, so, oh, here's my little note. It says, each time you create an instance of a class, you're creating an object that contains its own copy of each instance variable defined by the class. So that's, we're creating a copy of basically everything in here for our, our uh, instance, right? Uh, let's see. Thus, every vehicle object will contain its own copies of instance variables passengers, fuel cap, MPG. To access these variables, you will use the dot operator, which is this guy, right? Well, we had him a minute ago, but the dot operator is what we were using to tell it where the, what we're invoking within the class, right? So the dot operator, the dot operator links the name of an object with the name of a member, whether it's a method or not. So when we do this and we say, um, S P O R T sports car. I'm going to do that so it uppercases it. We're going to say sports car dot, and then we're going to say what we want. So we're going to say set, and we're going to set, let's say, number of passengers. And we're going to say two. Now you'll notice this is automatically, because we already have it here, it knows it wants an int that I'm using here, and it's called number pa num passengers. So this is also showing me the same thing. We're going to say it's a two-seater, right? Sports cars generally are. Let's go ahead and do C. Let's just do V and V. Hit control space and we can type set. And let's do fuel capacity. Sports cars, let's, yeah, they usually have pretty small tanks. Let's say maybe uh, 20 gallons or so, maybe 23, I don't know. And then sports car set, control space, and we want to set its miles per gallons. Usually they're pretty low. Let's say maybe how many miles per gallon? I would say I burn through it really quick. Let's just make up, let's just say maybe 15 miles. That actually sounds kind of low, but that's okay. Then we're going to do the same thing with pickup truck. So C and V. And we're going to say pickup truck. P I C K pickup truck. And we're going to go ahead and replicate that. And say C and V and V. Whoops, whoops, control Z. No, don't turn that one into pickup truck. And V. So let's say this is a five seater because it's a king cab type thing. Fuel capacity is usually they have monster tanks. We'll say 40 miles per gallon is usually terrible. Let's just say 10. I don't know. That's probably worse than terrible. So now we're actually setting these things and each object is getting its own stuff. So if I want to call that stuff and say, um, let's just do S P O R T sports car, right? And we say dot and get passengers from passengers. Uh, and maybe stick this in an S out so we can see it. S out. And delete that and that. Go to the end. Throw that in. And some corn. And then maybe with our pickup truck, let's get maybe the fuel cap. So S O U T. Do that. And then say P I C. 
CK pickup truck dot and let's get the fuel cap. So now if we do that, we can actually access these variables that we now have set. So you can see sports car has two seater or two passengers that has 40 gallon tank. Oh, let's see, what else did I want to talk about? I think that pretty much covers it. We're about 35 minutes, so I think that's pretty good. I think what we're gonna talk about in the next episode, we're probably gonna focus more in on reference variables and explain this whole uh, reference variable part a little bit better, I think. Um, and then maybe we'll also get into constructors. Um, there's also some called deconstructors, but I think uh, Java calls them finalize or something like that. Uh, but there's really, with the garbage collector, it, and I'll explain that as well, it's really not used very much. Um, not as critical as it is in some other programming languages where if you don't deconstruct or close things out that it just ties up that memory and you get memory leaks and such. So I think this pretty much does a good job of explaining this. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the, the, the comments down below. I will do my best to answer them and try and clarify anything that might have been too con uh, confusing. Just remember the main thing I wanted to get out here is mostly this is how you design a class. You can change the access modifier. It has member variables and it has member functions or member methods. And in order to access private variables, it's best to use getters and setters and leave these private because you don't want anyone just modifying them however they want. Uh, we might actually want to always apply some kind of, you know, process before we set these and stuff. And if they can access them directly, then that kind of makes that moot. Uh, and then the other thing is how to actually create objects from our classes. And then finally, how to access members or how to uh, invoke components or whatever from our classes. So if you understood that, then you're really doing great. Like I said, though, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Just leave questions down in the comment section down below. Um, also, uh, if you did enjoy this, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. If you want to be notified, apparently YouTube's changed it. Just clicking subscribe is no longer enough to get notified when a new video gets put up. Now there's a little bell next to the subscribe button. You need to click the little, uh, the little bell, the notification bell, in order to get notified when videos go up. So click that and you'll be notified. Or if you follow me on Twitter, Twitter still hasn't failed me. It always, YouTube, I have my YouTube always push out to Twitter saying that I put out a video. So you'll be notified that way for sure. So thank you guys once again for watching. That's all I have to say. Um, I think check out my other channels, Discord, all the information in the video description. And that's it. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.